Hey everyone, Karen here with Yes Please Paper Crafts and I have a little bit of an organizational video for you guys today. I'm going to be talking about paper pad storage again and this time we're going to be focused on 6x6 and 6x8 paper pads. So the first thing I did when I was trying to organize these uh, 6x6 and 6x8 paper pads was I went um, throughout my craft room and I just collected uh, them from various locations. I had them everywhere and I, I brought them all together and I figured out how many I had and then tried to determine where would be the best place uh, to store them in my uh, craft room. And I decided to put uh, the majority of them on a hanging shelf that sits right above my flip storage bins where I have my 12 by 12 paper by collection and uh, I can fit almost all of the paper pads there. Now I do have some that are specialty paper and cardstock and uh, some other sizes like 4 by 6 and 8 by 10 and those are in my Billy bookcase but uh, all of these pattern paper ones that are 6 by 6 or 6 by 8 are stored on that hanging shelf and I will try to insert a picture somewhere um, on the screen up here maybe and show you what that looks like, what that hanging shelf looks like. So I wanted to mention that not only am I putting this tab on all of the paper pads, which has the manufacturer and the name of the paper pad, I am also on the back of the tab writing down the number, and this is kind of the location of where it is in my craft room. So I have all these on the hanging shelf, and what I do is when I'm building this reference guide, I will print off a, um, an image of the front cover and then I, on the back of that I will list HS for hanging shelf and then this number, so 59. And uh, if we look here at this one I can go to uh, collections <clears throat> and find the Chamel. Let's see that's And uh, this is the 6x8 paper pad here. If I was looking in this visual reference guide and I wanted to work with this paper pad, what I would do is just flip this over and on the back, it's going to have listed that I have a 6x8 paper pad. It's on the hanging shelf and it's number 14. And so that's how I'm able to find quickly find this in my craft room. And the other awesome thing about it is when I'm finished using this, I know right where to put it back so that the next time I want to use it, it's in the right place. So um, I've been uh, doing this with my 12 by 12 paper pads and I liked it so much and it's been awesome. I just decided, hey, why not do it for the 6x6 and the 6x8. I'm going to be doing a video just on how to create the tabs for both the 6x6 and the 12 by 12 paper pads as a separate video. That way when people ask how did, how did I do that, I can just direct them just to that video and they won't have to watch um, if they don't want to watch the other part of this. So I'm going to do a separate video on that and uh, I'll probably post this video and also that one at the same time. So if you're interested, I will put a link in the description below on how to create these paper pads and or I'm sorry, how to create these tabs for your paper pads and how to attach them. And um, the reason why I did that originally was because I keep my paper pads in a uh, storage cube unit from Recollections and it's very difficult when you put the paper pads in there to get them out, especially if you have it kind of stuffed full. You need to have some way to be able to grab hold of the paper pads. So I added these tabs as a handle in a way to be able to pull the paper pad in and out of my uh, storage cube. And then the other reason why I added the tab was because originally when I was storing these paper pads, I was doing this by alphabetical order, by manufacturer, and then by the name of the paper pad. And I used this tab to add a label with that information, and then I had them stored alphabetically. And uh, that was working okay, but um, I was still struggling with trying to find it. And, you know, I'm older, so my eyesight is not as good. And these labels, you know, they're, they're visible if you're, you know, sitting here with it like this. But... When it's in the, the storage cube like this, it was still difficult for me to read that. So I was watching um, a bunch of YouTube videos on organization and uh, I love Totally Tiffany and I've watched a bunch of her videos. And uh, if you haven't watched her videos, I would definitely recommend going and checking her out. And I will leave a link to her channel in the description below. The other person I've been watching is uh, Janet over at RTS Scrapbooking. 
And uh, she's also got some amazing organizational videos. Um, and I'll leave a link to her channel as well. You've probably heard of both those people, but just in case, um, I'd just like to, uh, to share that with you guys. So when I was organizing my 12 by 12 paper pads, um, and I had watched both Totally Tiffany and Janet and how they organized their paper, I had uh, kind of like a light bulb go off and I realized that I could store my paper pads in a location. Uh, I just decide, you know, I'm going to put it in this location and then I didn't have to organize it. I could just store it there and I could number it, you know, one through whatever. And uh, then what I did was I, I went ahead and I created this visual reference guide and I got this idea from Janet, or RTS scrapbooking, but I created this reference guide. And um, so instead of organizing my paper pads, I'm organizing just this reference guide. And this has made such a huge difference in the way that I actually can find things. So um, I did do a video on this a uh, couple, maybe it's about maybe a month and a half ago. And that is out there. And I'll link to, to that video in my description as well. But um, this, what I did here was I created, um, originally it was just one, but I decided when I was doing these six by six and six by eight paper pads that I would do them the same exact way that I'm doing the 12 by 12. Now I had thought maybe, you know, these, I don't have as many of these uh, six by six and, and six by eights that I could just like have them somewhere and be able to like just look through them because they are smaller. They're not, they're not as hard to handle as the 12 by 12s. But uh, in the end, I decided it would be awesome if I could, you know, be able to have a reference guide for all my paper. And if I had, like, say, for instance, this Chamel Sparkle City, I have not only the 6x8 paper pad, but I have the 12x12 12 12 project pad. And uh, so I would like to know that, like, if I'm deciding I want to work with this collection, I would be able to tell all the different things that I have in this collection. So that's kind of what I've been working on the last couple weeks. Um, and I decided to, you know, do the same thing. So that's why this reference guide has grown. It originally was just one book and now it's two. And I have divided it into two different uh, kind of sections. This one I call my rainbow. And then this one is themes. And so I'm going to just do a real quick flip, flip through so you can kind of get an idea of how I have this organized. I will also um, put a list of all the categories that I used in the description. But um, I would suggest to you, you don't really, I guess everybody is different in the way they organize. So what categories and uh, work for me may not work for you. So I would definitely recommend, you know, just thinking about how do you scrapbook? You know, how do you look for paper? Uh, what is the things that kind of prompt you to go and try to find paper? And then you use those categories. So for instance, if you have, um, you know, children, you have babies, you might want to have a category for like baby girl, baby boy, or, you know, if you travel a lot, you might want to have a travel category. Um, so just think about, you know, the different ways you scrapbook and the ways that you look for paper, and those should be the categories that you create. Now, one of the things that I really look for is color. And so what I ended up doing was I put a lot of my paper pads in color because a lot of paper pads are not themed. This particular paper pad is a, I think this is a fall paper pad, but if you were to look through this, you would not know that this is fall. I think other than a couple pages where they have acorns, like this page, um, this paper pad doesn't look like fall to me at all. Um, and maybe the cutter parts might have some fall sayings on them, but yeah, it doesn't really, you know, look like fall. So most of my paper pads that I have, you know, they're just, it's just color. So for instance, this one here, it's kind of just neutral color. So I put it under the neutral category. So let's go ahead and flip through these and so you can get an idea of how I have this organized. And I'm hoping this, this showing this to you guys will give y'all some ideas about how you can do your paper. So originally I had four categories for my rainbow. I had brights, pastels, neutrals, and darks. And that was working pretty good, but then my brights, category was really getting you know big and so I decided I would add a category called everyday and everyday is kind of like colors in between pastels and brights you know it's not really bright bright colors and it's not really soft pastel colors so I have this category called everyday and then here you'll see that I have paper that's kind of like you know 
I would say medium tones, I guess, you know. So that's kind of what's in there. And you'll notice up here, um, well, when I was sorting through here, I was trying to decide what category I was going to put it in before I put it into my reference guide. So I did was writing on here as I went through each one of these pages. And I thought, well, I'm just going to, you know, decide what category I'm going to put it in. And then there's a couple of these I haven't actually gone through and written. Let me go ahead and go to a different page because, let's see, this is pastels. You'll see here that I have a 12 by 12 paper pad and it's in SC27. That's the location of where it is. So if I wanted to go and get this paper pad from my craft room, I would know that I could go to my storage cubes and go to paper pad 27 and that's where this paper pad is going to be. So um, that's how I locate uh, the paper pad. But the way I organize it is in, in this reference guide. And uh, so this is a really cool way to organize. I could actually reorganize this as much as I wanted and never have to reorganize or change the way that I'm storing my paper. And so that was kind of like my, you know, I don't know. It was kind of like a light bulb going off, I guess. I was just like, you know, this is just life changing to me that I don't have to fiddle with, you know, organizing and moving my paper pads around. I can just store them, number them, and then I'm done. Um, oh, I also wanted to mention that I created these little uh, printouts. I used, uh, let's see, I used eight and a half by 11 printer paper and I printed two per sheet and then I just cut them down. The size that I'm using is about a five inch square, but I think it's actually four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And uh, so this is the size I decided to use. I think Janet at RTS Scrapbooking, she uses um, a four by six photo and she prints two paper pads on each photo. And uh, I really did like that, but I thought that would be kind of small for me because I have trouble seeing. So I wanted to make mine bigger and I decided on this size. So you know, how you do yours, you know, that's up to you what size you would like to make it. But I just decided I like this size because one thing is that this size allows me to be able to get a good representation of everything on this paper pad because it has like pictures of all the different sheets that are in this paper pad. So as you're flipping through here, you know, you can see, you know, what paper is actually in that paper pad. If I would have made this smaller, I would have had a hard time you know, seeing the different little, you know, pa paper that's in here. So let's, okay, so I went off on a tangent. <laughs> Let me go back to the categories that I have here. So I have my rainbow, I have every day, and I went through and decided, you know, what each paper pad would go in. And if I change my mind, it's pretty easy to just take, you know, this one and move it to another category. But I have um, every day pastels. And uh, so in the pastels, you'll see I have really light colors and really soft colors. So that's pastels. Then we have brights. And in brights, we have much more vibrant colors, you know. Um, so that's just kind of, it's kind of up to you too, if, if whether or not you want to do, um, you know, what categories you want to put it in. Because for somebody, this might be every day. But for me, it kind of just seem like a bright and you'll notice I had this one twice um I actually do have a 12 by 12 paper pad and I also have a 4 by 6 so that's why I had that in there twice and uh, I'm still kind of working through um marking all these um I've been uh trying to to figure out where I, what I did with some of my 12 by 12 paper pads because I know that I had them but I've misplaced them I think 12 paper pads <laughs> I don't know where they went so I don't know if y'all do that but when I'm reorganizing, I'm pulling everything out. And then, um, you know, as I was going through and marking and putting numbers on the back of the page like I did here, um, I couldn't find this paper pad. So I must have it somewhere, but, you know, I, I, don't, I can't imagine what I did with it. I looked for a couple of hours the other day and I couldn't find them anywhere. So <laughs> went through my closets and everywhere in my craft room that I could store 12 by 12 and I couldn't find them. But uh, I'm sure eventually they'll show up. <laughs> Okay, so then I have um, darks, which is, the way I did darks was anything that had navy or black basically would go into this category. And uh, I just uh, thought that that would be kind of cool because a lot of times you're working with layouts that are navy and black or dark colors like this maroon color. 
And uh, so I decided to have a category for darks. Then I have neutrals, which is things like uh, black. This is black and cream. Uh, there's like gray and gold and tan. There's uh, browns and tans. So that's how I did that. So those are all neutral colors. Okay, then I have my next two categories are, they're not really themes and they're not really rainbow, but they're kind of, to me, a way to describe paper in my mind. And, and you know, that you might not have categories like this, but I have these two categories. One is called retro and the other one is called vintage. And the way that I determine how a paper pad get, gets into one of these categories is if Retro to me means distressed and uh, kind of like something that's old fashioned or maybe like from the 60s. So this kind of a style. Um, it just, I don't know, for some reason when I go through these paper pads and I look at them, they just, I just think retro. So um, I went ahead and put these kind of paper pads into that category. Okay, because you know when you're scrapbooking and you're, you know, you're trying to work on a project, if you're if you're working on a project where you're using this distressed paper or this kind of antique looking paper um, that is kind of you would stick to the paper in this category so that's what I thought when I was trying to decide what categories I would put my paper in now vintage to me is different vintage is like teapots and uh, teacups and uh, antique stores and books and things like that so um, I just think it as being roses and soft colors and pastels and so I have a lot of uh, these paper pads and the reason why I decided to put these in a separate category is because um, when I'm scrapbooking and I'm looking for a particular style I might go uh, to this vintage category to pull something so um, that's why I went ahead and put it into a separate category because really this could have gone into pastels um, and you can, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to know what category to put it in, but uh, I just, you know, I did it based on how I thought that I would pull the paper. And uh, so that's that one book. And then I have another reference guide here, and this one is by Themes, but it doesn't just have themes in it. Um, if you watch uh, Totally Tiffany, she has a video um, where she talks about her four section system. And uh, that video too changed the way that I organize and the way that I store things in my craft room. Uh, I just love that. So her four section system is alphanumeric, uh, rainbow, themes, and then the calendar year or the seasons. And so the way that I like to organize things and when I'm thinking about something is first I think is this alphanumeric and if it is it goes into that category. Then I think is this uh, reference to the calendar year like is it Christmas or Mother's Day or Fourth uh, of July or something that's like falling within a certain month in the calendar if it is then it goes into the calendar year then I think is this something that is a theme is it travel related is it baby related is it pets or you know just any kind of themes that you have that you have set up in your craft room and if it is it'll go on that theme and if I have anything that doesn't fall within those three uh, sections, I will put it under the rainbow, which is by color. So that's kind of how I've been organizing. And um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share with you this. Now, this doesn't completely follow the four section system because I have some extra categories in here. So I have a category called backgrounds. And what I put in here is paper pads that I feel like I could use for matting or using as a background in a, a layout page. So this is um, just backgrounds. Uh, next I have seasons and I don't tend to buy paper pads that are seasonal so I don't have very many here but I have like a Valentine's, there's a fall and 4th of July and uh, another fall and then this one is uh, also uh, seasonal. I think it's fall and Christmas um, and also like Halloween. Uh, I also have some Christmas stuff, which I have not um, completely organized yet. I've been pulling out those uh, 12 by 12 iris cases out of my closet and trying to go through it. And I realized that those iris cases are, um, yeah, I put stuff in there and I put it in the closet and then I forget about it. So I'm going to need to figure out a better way of trying to remember what I have if I store things in those uh, 12 by 12 iris cases. But Okay, so next we have um, a category called Summer. 
And I just thought this would be good to kind of separate out because if I'm working on a page like for the beach or the pool or something like that, I might want to pull paper by the summer because these are kind of uh, summer related themes, uh, theme papers. And then I have one for travel. I do, I do like to um, scrapbook when I travel, so uh, or scrapbook travel pictures, I should say. Not scrapbook when I'm traveling. <laughs> okay, so uh, I have things in here that are all... Um, travel paper pads uh, then I have and when I did my 12 by 12 paper pad um, video and I showed you this reference guide originally I had less categories and then since I've been going through the 6x6 and 6x8 paper pads I have more categories I added more categories because I have way more um, pages in here and I wanted to kind of divide it up so that it would be easier for me to find things also I have um, some I think this is like a four by six four and a half by six and a half so I have some smaller paper pads that have a, a theme like this is definitely baby boy uh, so we have baby girl and I just put all these together because I don't have that many that I want to have a category for girls and boys and you know uh, so I just made one category for all of this so this is all just paper that I have that's kind of baby or kids or girls and that's yeah that shouldn't be in there that's that's like in the wrong spot look it even says florals on the back so let's put let's go ahead and leave that one <laughs> okay so we have like this playground so this is all kind of like girly or kids or you know that kind of stuff and then i have a category called dogs and cats and i only have one paper pad in here but i scrapbook a lot of uh, pictures of my dogs so um i've made a separate category and I may get more paper like this. And I am also thinking about possibly adding uh, collections to this uh, reference guide. And I have some collections that are specifically for my dogs. So I added a category for that, even though I just have this one. Uh, next, I have florals. And so we can go ahead and add this one in. And I do, within the category, I organize and I sort this by manufacturer and then by the name of the paper pad. And since this one is DCWV, I'm going to put this one in the front. And uh, you don't have to do that. I just think it's, if I'm looking for something, maybe it helped me. If I have, you know, 20 sheets in here, I would kind of know if it's recollections, it would be toward the back. Um, so this category is a new one as well. And I just decided I would do florals separately. And I haven't gone through all of the different ones in rainbow. I might pull some more out of there and put it over here. Um, but I thought these paper pads um, have a lot of flowers. It's mostly just flowers. And so I thought I would put these um, in a separate category called florals. And uh, so it looks like that. And then I have celebrations. And uh, the reason why I separated this out was because sometimes I like to make cards. And I have some paper pads that are um, specific to birthday. And I also have one for graduation. So I thought I would make a separate category just to put my paper that is birthday or celebration um, related so that it would be easy for me to just find that. And then I have, uh, I made another new category called office because I had a bunch of paper pads that were, had like paper clips and telephones and notepads and different things like that. And so I just decided I would create a category for that. I think I only have three in here, but I had a few other uh, paper pads that I'm thinking about putting into this category. And so I'll probably move those later. Um, this is kind of like a work in progress. And you know, I think that, um, I don't know that I'll ever be finished with this because I'm probably gonna at some point add new paper pads. Maybe I'll add my collections in here and maybe I will use up a paper pad and it'll come out. So I think this is going to be like uh, ongoing as I um, you know organize and keep my supplies I'm going to be using this reference guide to kind of track my paper and uh, it's also going to help me with shopping or not shopping because I can look through here if I'm wanting some paper for a specific thing I can look through here and I can see if I have paper if I don't then I will allow myself to go and buy some more paper but I think I probably have enough paper to scrapbook the rest of my life <laughs> but um yeah, so <laughs> that's a whole nother story. <laughs> I I have to admit, I'm a little bit of a paper addict. Um, yeah, I uh, I do. I love paper. It's uh, it's the one thing I think that I have the hardest time not buying when I go shopping. 
Okay, so um, this next one is going to be collections, and in this category, um, it, I have all of these paper by manufacturer, and the reason why I decided to have a separate uh, category in this reference guide that just for collections is because these are paper pads that I have where I have a lot of ephemera. I have um, a lot of embellishments, and so um, I want to be able to um, have that keep created separately, and if you look on some of these, I started kind of keeping track. Well, like this one, I have both a 6x8 and a 12x12 12 12 paper pad. And I haven't gone through here and, and added all of this, but let me just go to this one here. Um, this particular one, which is a Saturday afternoon, I fell in love with this collection. And so I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Now I haven't gone through and figured out exactly what I have. That's kind of my next step is to start working with the embellishments and trying to organize those so that when I go to work with this collection, I will know where all of these other things are located. So right now I have a 12 by 12 paper pad, two six by eight paper pads. I know I have some ephemera and I know I have thickers. And so I just want to be able to, um, you know, track on here what I have so that if I decide I want to work with this collection, then I can pull that stuff and uh, be able to have, uh, have that, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, this happens, you buy stuff, like you buy a collection like this, and then over time, things kind of move around the craft room, and then you kind of lose track of it. And this has happened to me so many times that I would sit down to scrapbook, I would pull out something like, say, like this paper pad, and then I would try to go through and find the um, things that go with it, and I would spend time doing that, and by the time I got everything collected, to get ready to scrapbook, I'd, I'd be done. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go do something else because I'm tired of this. <laughs> so, so that's one of my biggest drivers in trying to get myself organized is that I would like to be able to go into my craft room and decide what I'm going to do, pull my supplies, and then just get to scrapbooking and not spend hours just trying to find stuff. So that's that's kind of my goal in uh, right now is to try to just get myself super organized so that I can scrapbook and have fun and not get frustrated by not being able to find things. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, we have a couple more categories here. Uh, we have other, and in other, I have a paper pad called the Lazy Scrapbooker, and I um, that is like a special, kind of a specialty paper pad to me. And there's a couple other things in this category, like this is a die cut shapes, which is, um, a paper pad that has punch out so to me this is more like um it's more like an embellishment it's not really a paper pad so i have this under other same thing with this journaling one it's also punch you can punch stuff out or cut it out and the same thing with the tags it's more like these are more like embellishments or specialty things now i did originally call that specialty but then i ended up with a specialty category that i wanted to use and so i changed the name of this to other and then the specialty is going to be special paper, like this is like crepe paper. I have like washi tape paper. Oops, dribble. There's washi tape paper, there's cork, there's burlap. There's some really pretty uh, paper, embossed paper from Tonic Studios. So I just mirror card, all kinds of different foil paper, have glitter paper. So all of this specialty paper uh, went into the specialty category. And then the last one I have here is cardstock. I do have some paper pads that are cardstock, and I decided I would go ahead and list those as well. So I have um, all of this cardstock as well. Um, so that's it for the uh, visual reference guide. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention or share with you guys. Oh, um, I have a, we have a Facebook group out there. It's called Craft Room Organization with Yes Please Paper Crafts. And I will leave a link in the description below if you would like to join that group. Just click the link and then uh, request to join and you'll get added to the group. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I forgot to say. You know, I'm doing these videos and I just started a few months ago. And uh, I do the whole video and then I go through the editing process and I watch it and before I put it up on YouTube. And I always seem like I'm forgetting to tell y'all something that I want to say later and, and then I can't add it. So. <laughs> um, hmm. Maybe I'll think about it. I think I'll watch this back and if I think of anything, I will, uh, when I make the video on how to create these uh, 
paper pad tabs i will maybe put it in there or i will leave it in the description below if i think of anything else that i forgot to tell y'all okay well that's all i have for you guys today um oh i know what i forgot to tell y'all um i wanted to show you um actually some pictures of uh, what this uh, looks like in my craft room so i'm going to put some uh maybe a video a little video clip at the end so just stick around and you will see how these paper pads are stored in my craft room and you can get like kind of a visual of what it looks like um all right that's it so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a like and if you would like to see more uh, please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Okay. <laughs>